All right, hello everyone. We're finally live, and we're finally live. Going to be doing SCG Weekly episode number sixty-four, Nintendo sixty-four. Um, I decided to throw that in there because it's uh, it's a momentous occasion. Uh, it's also a momentous occasion because this is the start of the indie month. We're calling it that. Um, we're going to be covering uh, and talking to developers of a lot of the, the um, in independently developed uh, shooters for the month of August. And this uh, episode, we're covering Hangeki, and this is um, we're going to be uh, talking with uh, two of the two of the, uh, two of the developers, uh, the main one, uh, the main ones, um, and that's going to be uh, Jaron Kong and uh, Kong and uh, Greg. Uh, how do you say your last name? Lyle. Lyle. Okay, and Greg Lyle. So yeah, guys, um, welcome to the show. Great to have you on for this. Uh, it's definitely it's going to be an awesome episode. Just talking about uh, learning a bit about uh, shooter shooter development and uh, Hangeki, of course. Yeah, sure. Glad to be here. And uh, yeah, um, co-host joining as well. Um, we got Soft Drink and Frenetic here uh, joining me as well, and we're going to be um, just bombarding these guys with some fun interview questions. Yeah, <laughs> F man in the house, guys. I'm going to ask and and please in the chat if you have any questions for Jaron and Greg interject and we'll go ahead and answer those for you guys too indeed feel free to throw those in there and we'll try to relay them um so yeah i suppose uh jaren and greg do you guys want to um introduce yourself as far as uh i guess um a little bit about your background uh or maybe for Nick, you can help me with what type of the intro questions yeah, they yeah. Should ask, they should answer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just please introduce yourselves, Garen and Greg, and how you came to create this wonderful game of Angeki. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry. So, I'm Jaren Kong, and uh, I grew up in uh, Southern California. And then for school, I'm currently going to RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, in New York. It's, uh, mm. it's near Albany, so it's um, definitely on the other side of the country there. Wow, right? what so, a big uh, game. Yeah, so it, it's cold. That was the first thing I noticed. But um, so that school has a, a game program, actually. They call it GSAT, so Game Simulation Arts and Sciences. Mm -hmm. So I'm going there to get to get that degree and then along with a computer science degree. So it's like a dual major type thing. Wow, what a, and, what uh, a combination. Yeah, how, so... Um, how, about you, how about you, Greg? How did you... Are you also out there in New York and Albany with... Uh, I am Jeremy? also out there at uh, RPI in New York, although I didn't start on the opposite side of the country. I'm, I'm actually from New Jersey, so... Wasn't mm. quite as far of a travel for me. So, so you're a bridge and tunnel there, right? Kind yeah. of. Nice. Yeah, but uh, we're right now we're going to be juniors this next coming year. But um, wow. Yeah. So and for you, Hungeki, and you made a game. Yeah. How did so for Hungeki, we started when um actually just real quick um, it started when I was taking a class. It was called Art for Interactive Media. It was my freshman year, my first semester freshman, and then for the final in that class, the guy basically said, "Hey, make a game." And I was like, I, I like shooter games. And I'm like, you know, I think I could, you know, try my hand at one. And then, you know, I thought, but I don't want to just copy another one, right? So I tried, you know, throwing together some mechanics and stuff. And, you mm -hmm. know, then I, I met Greg and then we started talking. We made some games and I was like, hey, Greg, you want to you wanna work on this with me? I don't know. We'll just cut, keep working on it, make it good. And then we uh -huh. spent the next like year and a half, almost two years now working wow. on it since then. So it's, wow. it's been a process. We've learned a lot. Like we went into this knowing like nothing, like, how does, how does a computer work? How does code work? I don't know. But um, that's amazing. we just kept, uh, I mean, kept How many times stuff. has that happened where people said, hey, I'd like to, I like shooters, I'll make a shooter, but they don't <laughs> get as far as such a polished product as and, this. Yeah, you started from an initial, like, the initial idea, and then I like that you carried it, you know? Oh, yeah. Through, um, you carried it through, and well, it, you came out with something pretty good, I think from what I've played so far, at least. Yeah, I really like it, too. Um, yeah, um, I like it. Um, yeah, that's really good to hear. Yeah, especially as, like, you guys going from... Did you play a lot of shooters? Yeah, so um, I was a pretty big shooter fan. I mean, I played a... I got into Toho, like, a couple of years ago. I see. And um, I really liked the games. I mean, it was, it was... They were really pretty. They had really good characters. And, like, the fan community behind it was really... It was really great. They always have cool stuff. So I got into that. I got, that's how I really got into shooters, through uh, Toho. And mm -hmm. then I kind of branched out from there. How about you, Greg? Uh, when when um, 
when Jaren approached you to work on this project, had you played a lot of shooters as well, or...? I wouldn't have called myself a huge shooter fan. I mean, I played a few of them, but uh -huh. not not nearly to the extent that Jaren has. Although, I've always kind of been interested in them, because I've always liked games that kind of have a huge skill component. So I was uh -huh. definitely interested in getting into that kind of thing. What, what other games did you like that had a huge skill component that... Oh, man. Um... I can't think of any. Uh, I mean, I play a lot of like John Q Wars on, the, on uh, Xbox. Oh, okay. I'm always a big fan of that. Just kind of okay. going for it, seeing how well you could get through a, you know, a short thing. Hmm. Sure. So, um, maybe Soft Drink, since you've been working on the shoot, you kind of have a little parallel too. Like, you're in yeah, class actually, and school as a, well. It's a very similar situation, actually. So, um. Let's see. Well, I, I recently switched majors. I guess I should explain that first. So, uh, this, this is, I'm going into my fourth year uh, at the end of the summer, and um, the first two years here at, at UCLA, I was a mechanical engineering major, and then I figured out that I hated that, so I switched <laughs> over to. Uh, it's it's a very strange name for a program. It's called Design Media Art, but it's it's kind of a multidisciplinary thing that covers everything from graphic design to you know interactive work to. 3D modeling, rapid prototyping, animation, film, oh. photography, just all kinds of stuff. Lot of stuff. And then um, a couple months ago, I actually took a class. Uh, interactivity, it was the name, but it's basically about using um, using code to create interactive, um, you know, media work. And so everything from generative image systems to um, kind of simplified games to the the final project, I decided to make a make a shooting game. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's interesting that I had kind of that, that same experience there, trying to trying to work on it. At the moment, I'm just so busy, I haven't had any time to come back to it and find it. But um, yeah. I definitely do yeah. want to go back to it and, and see what else I can do. So. Sure. I definitely so, think it's a big challenge to just finding time. Mm. So, which program did you use to create um, this this game, Create and Get You Guys? Yeah, so uh, I guess I can speak on that. So uh, it's actually made with a program called Game Maker. Probably oh. heard of it at some point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not quite. It's not quite drag and drop. There's we're using like their scripting language and everything, but uh, and a lot of our own stuff on the back end too. But uh, it's uh, it, it was made with Game Maker. Wow. Okay, cool. That's very impressive. That's, actually, yeah, very I mean, impressive. most Game Maker games are kind Friends of making not kind of kind of bad, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I mean, it's there's, some, the there's moment, some great right? stuff from Game Maker, but a lot of it is like not that, that great. Yeah, 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 but that's that's very impressive, actually. Um, yeah, I'm writing mine from from scratch in um, in processing, which is a it's a Java derivative. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. I've messed with that. Oh yeah. It's yeah, a, it's I've, a very uh... very. Fun. All right. Why don't we get to uh, talking about Hange Hangeki itself? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, sure. Jaren or Greg, would you guys want to um, introduce the game yourself? Uh, uh, sure, I guess I can. Uh, I can just talk and briefly introduce it. I guess so. Um, it's uh, it follows the same basic formula, like Space Invaders Galaga. So it's a wave-based shooter. It's not like scrolling or anything like that. So mm -hmm. you pick a level and then you go through a set of 15 waves and then the boss. Mm -hmm. And um, as you can see, the screen is like keeps flashing and all that stuff. So you have a bunch of weapons and then you also have a weapon called the Hangeki, which is where the game gets its name from. So with the Hangeki, once you destroy enough enemies on the screen, it will fill up that bar at the top, and then you can hit the space bar, and then it will destroy the rest of the wave and let you move on. So I, if you play like wave-based shooters like Galaga, Space Raiders, all that stuff, one of the problems is, right, you um, you kill enough enemies, and then there's only a few left, and then it really sucks right then, right? Because you're like, oh, I gotta like pick off the last one, or you play Breakout, right? Getting that last brick, really annoying. Like yeah. you've already won it. You've already won at that point. The game's just wasting your time. <laughs> so, like when I when I was originally making this like this game, it started as a wave-based shooter because I was like making scrolling levels is a lot harder. So I just made oh, waves man. and I was like, oh, this is fun. And then, mm -hmm. but I had that same problem and I was like, what? Why? 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 I don't know what to do. And then I was like, but wait, you've already won. Why don't you just blow them up? So I tried it and it's like this. This actually works. Like <laughs> it, it really seems really does. simple, and but it's like. One thing I was like, oh, but wait, it makes the game too easy, right? And it's like, not really, because at the end of a wave, you've already won. Like, you're just, like, the wave you've isn't going to kill you anymore. Exactly. And, and so, you know, it works so well with the timer. It's like, oh, I want to build up my Hangeki meter so I can press mm -hmm. spacebar. And it feels like a bomb that just, like, 
right. clears the whole screen. So right, exactly. Yeah, the uh, the visual effects are pretty satisfying in this game. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's almost uh, like kind of Dodo, like uh, the later Dodo Pachi kind of yeah, yeah, uh, over the topness. Well, oh, definitely. <laughs> that, it, it that was one of the It feels like the 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 extreme part of Space Invaders Extreme, where mm -hmm. you're you're um, and I like the. Con like where you're pressing the hangeki bar and it's just like oh i'm just gonna i've got it you know and like yeah. let's get on to the next level and you're just like see you guys you know yeah it's it, make, it of... makes the end of a level like the high point like yeah rather than oh now i gotta kick off the last remaining guy it totally yeah, like changes it... just how you like it makes the end of a level really the exciting part it keeps the yeah. pace the pace going too which i think is uh, one, yeah. of the best, one of the best parts about it Definitely. Yeah, that's the same thing with like wave shooters as versus scrolling shooters. It's like, oh yeah, you've done the work, and then the enemy goes aggro, and it's just so annoying. And I don't yeah. when you kill him, finally, it doesn't feel like yeah, it feels like god dang, what a pain! Like that was a real yeah. pain. It, and uh, I mean, the, uh, another interesting side effect of having the hangeki in a wave based shooter is the player determines the pace of the game. Really, like if you destroy enemies faster you'll be able to move through waves and kill more enemies faster. If you get stuck on a wave, well, the wave's just gonna sit there until you get rid of it. So if, you do, if you're good and do well, you go faster. If you're not as good, you go slower. Which also ties into the scoring system, but uh, I think we'll touch on that probably a bit later. Yeah, would you want to get into kind of the weapon selection and how, sure. how that works in the game? I suppose that'd yeah. be the next part. So with Hangeki, you get your standard blaster, of course, right? But then you also pick four weapons to go into every level with. And then if you're on the keyboard, those are signed, you know, Q, W, E, R. So if you play like League of Legends or any MOBA or something, basically like that. So every weapon has like a level. So one, two or three. And then you're as you hit enemies and collect those little yellow coins, those will charge your power meter, which is in the bottom right. And your power meter has levels one, two and three. So you need a level one meter to fire a level one weapon, two for a level two and then three for three. So those systems complement each other. Exactly. There. And then the other trick is that um, is if you're not actually hitting enemies or collecting coins or, you know, just hitting things and being destructive, your combo meter will decay. So it gives you a lot of interesting, you know, risk reward because in order to hit an enemy, you have to go directly below it. But that's usually where it's shooting. But if you don't go below it and, you know, risk getting shot, then you're just going to lose your meter anyway. So it's a matter of do you risk you know, like going in for that risky dodge, like dive into the enemies, blow them up, fire your weapon in their face, blow them all up, get more meter, or do you make the safe dodge, dodge outside the wave, and just let the let all the shots fly by? But if you do that, you're gonna lose all your meter anyway. Right, right. Yeah, you got to keep the chain going, otherwise right. you can't so it use the weapons. Right. It encourages you to take risks, be aggressive, rewards you with your weapons, more destruction, and then rewards you with faster hangeki. If you play safe. Well, it's going to be a lot slower, and you're not actually going to really accomplish much. You're just stalling at that point. Mm. So you really have to find the right opportunity, you know, dive into those bullets and go in. It's not so much like a scrolling shooter where, you know, if you just survive, it'll eventually go away. With this, you have to make it go away yourself. So you have to find that opening and just, like, go in. Mm. And you have your weapons there, so you can, like, burst parts down. And that also ties into um, the, the weapon diversity. So every weapon kind of has a different strategic niche almost so the shape of the wave has a lot to do with it because in like a scrolling shooter you don't really get to use that a lot you kind of just shoot forward you don't really care where you're shooting but in a yeah. wave based shooter like hangeki you can look at the wave and every enemy will only fire one type of bullet in one way but some enemies fire faster than others and some enemies don't fire at all so a lot of the strategy is you look at the wave and then assess where the threat is so sometimes you want to like dive and use a laser like knock out one of the big groups of dangerous enemies first yeah, like and the then lasers. move on to the other end. Right. Like you have, you set, I know since some of the ways you have like the laser guys set back and mm -hmm. they don't fire right away, but they will fire and restrict your movement. And exactly. so, um, and I noticed you have like kind of wall, like bigger enemies, which take a lot more damage that exactly. are kind of like shields, right? Right. And so you would use like a, a penetrating laser or something like that. Or, um, one of the beginning the spread the spread shots like the spread homing where yeah, yeah, you will kill a bunch of uh, tightly grouped enemies and get yep. more meter right away to do maybe your second laser right yep. exactly so, so that yeah. yeah i can see it's actually getting uh it looks like it's getting pretty crazy uh in the video now 
Oh yeah. So I mean, the game starts out pretty tame. It's like uh, we get that question a lot actually when we demo, or some a lot of people ask, is uh, is this game hard? Like, is there a challenge? And I was like, well, yes, there is. You're only playing like the first two levels. Like, Hongeki's mechanics are pretty different, so we want to make sure you know players have a chance to you know just farm enemies, really just get used to using weapons. And then later we start you know pulling the bullet hell thing, you know, put some stuff on the screen, make it a real challenge and restrict your movement. So yeah. It makes, uh, so it definitely gets pretty hard in the later levels. And then we also have some, you know, you know, your secret extra stage, of course. So if you're feeling hardcore, you can unlock that and that gets Oh, like from cool. Toho, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. You got your <laughs> secret, your extra stage, your extra boss. Of course, it's got like, you know, one of the coolest music tracks is on the extra stage. So uh, it's got all of that going. It's crazy to think that your, you know, your base was playing Toho games, but you went straight to like a very weapon based yeah. Type of well, I mean, shooter I, like I, this. See, the thing with uh, Toho, I like Toho because it's like the, it's really free and everything. But sometimes I want to blow <laughs> stuff up. Like, why does the enemy look cooler than me? Like, that's so. <laughs> oh, and gets to shoot like the complicated bullet. Yeah, fire exactly. Stuff yeah. Like, yeah. Right? I want to shoot. I want to shoot cool stuff too. I like you know? it. So it's like your revolt. Yeah. See, yeah. Here, here you go, guys. So if you want to shoot different weapons, like an auto fire and then a hard laser. Check out Hangeki. There's like <laughs> how many weapons are in this game? There's, There's 51. Wow. 51 wow. That's types of weapons. Amazing. And, and they're all are they all by, they're all unique. Yeah. So there's not just like two layers. Just one is blue and does more damage. No. They all yeah. have it's really interesting mechanics. Like some of the or the early weapons really simple. You know, you have missiles, laser, all the standard stuff. But then later you get like a bunch of you know more os attack, more complicated weapons, and then some utility too. So um. One of them called the Megavolt Dynamo. You get later on in the game. What it, it's purely, <laughs> it's a level three. <laughs> That's the best also, the name. name of the weapons we want to make sure they are cool. So you have like the Megavolt <laughs> Dynamo, and it's it doesn't do any damage. It's pure utility. It's a level three weapon. And what it does when you activate it, it resets the cooldowns of all your other level two or lower weapons, and then rapidly generates meter and gives you invincibility. Whoa! So the, so the strategy is you can use a level two. Blow up a bunch of enemies, grab all the coins, get a level three, fire the dynamo, use that level two again, and then like chain it. So it's like a reset. If you play oh. like a so like a Marvel like versus Capcom, kind of like, like um, multi like MMR RPG kind of weapon. Yeah. Weapons, so there's a right? lot of like, there's a lot of interaction. Nothing's explicit though. So it never says like resets all you know Infernix weapons or something. It's all it's all implied in just how the weapons work. Mm. Oh. And like weapons fire in different ways. So like one one weapon targets the farthest point from you and like makes a big explosion that rains downwards. So if you're like facing the wave, if you shoot it straight ahead into an enemy, it'll just blow up in your face and won't do anything. But if you like carve a, a hole through the wave and shoot it at the back of the screen, it'll fall down on the entire wave. I so like it. A lot of like positional positional strategy, and then there's different weapon combinations. Nothing's explicit once again. So all weapons will work kind of on their own. And you but can find you can your really own practice, comp, right? right? You come up with your own play style if you want to play safe. We have a lot of defensive weapons. There's like a couple of different ways to get invincibility. And it's just a lot of different options, a lot of different ways to approach the game. All the weapons are totally unique and each kind of fills its own, you know, its own niche. So when you're making a weapon composition, you know, if you have a homing weapon, homing weapons tend to be rather weak, but they're homing, so they're really safe. Whereas mm -hmm. lasers are more powerful, but they only fire straight ahead. So you have to position perfectly for that. Mm. But they also do more damage, so yeah, it's you know so, it's a balance of you know how how risky your weapons are, how safe you want to be, what your play style is, just really balancing that out. Please, so the coolest. Oh, go I, ahead. I think this is an awesome mechanic, and I really like the variety, especially especially seeing it in action and just kind of how much difference there is. But um, when I hear you know multiple weapons in a shooting game, one of the first things that comes to mind is how do you balance it? How does scoring work? Do you have different leaderboards for every weapon combination? Have you oh, worked so, really um, hard to make sure that the scoring potential is even, or is it going to be a case where one set of weapons is going to dominate the entire scoring system? Yeah, so that's um, that's a weapon balance issue. So that's something I've been that was uh, that was my job on this game mostly is that uh, I handled the design of weapons, most of the implementation. And that also ties into how we how we score the game. So if you look at it, there is no like point system. You don't just get like, you know, a million points, two million. You don't get these random multipliers everywhere. We originally had that, although we scrapped it because in favor of a timer. Because time okay. is something everybody understands. Like you know how yes. long ten seconds is, you know how long one second is. If you're playing a game, I don't really know how many one million points is. Like what does that mean? So when we're using time, it's a lot easier to compare yourself to someone else. Like that person did five seconds better than you. You know what that means. Mm. 
And you know, so it's why. basically a speed run shmup. You want to kill, you want to exactly. beat as many waves as you can in, in as quick a time as you can. And whatever weapons you use, you know, you can probably beat that time with some other weapon if you're more skilled with it. Exactly. So, I mean, in a lot of shooter games, they have really specific scoring systems that basically force you to play the game differently. It's it, they, The game tells you what the ideal strategy is. But mm -hmm. in Hongeki, we just give you a timer and say, okay, you start, when you finish, I'll just, you know, I'll keep track of that time. Everything you do in between, totally up to you. So it really lets you come up with your own style. It's like, okay, you, like, sometimes you want to just sweep across the waves, just, like, work from the front and back, or sometimes you want to work left to right. Sometimes for this one wave, you want to do this one thing and go for the other. Except, and the thing is, it's all time-based, so it doesn't really matter the specifics. We're not going to, you know, tell you what you're supposed to do, what the ideal yeah. strategy is. We just say, look, if you're going faster, that's a better strategy. As the, the, the weapons. as the uh, game kind of pans out and after it gets released here on Steam, do you think people are going to find uh, overpowered combinations? Yeah, then... so that's one thing we're, we're constantly tracking. And um, okay. the leaderboards in the game, we have online leaderboards, and they, they show your time as well as the weapons you use. Uh, okay, yeah, that's so, good. That's good. So it starts getting your metagame, too, so you can look at the leaderboards, see what other people are doing, and maybe get some ideas. But if one gets overpowered, then yeah, we can, you know, drop a nerf on that. And we're definitely <laughs> rebound. Ready to, back. Ready to drop nerfs. Them. Yeah, so if we do a major change, we'll probably wait for, um, it'll, it'll have to cycle in major updates. So we'll see if one strategy becomes really dominant, then, you know, we'll throw a hot fix or something. Okay. But in general, what we found, we've been testing this game for almost a year so far. It's We've been uh, showing it and doing all that. So the weapons are pretty close now. I mean, I'm sure some will come up with something I never thought of. We actually but, uh, had a uh, <laughs> thing where someone found the really overpowered thing once in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a Greg a Hebrew so. Mufasa. Pretty much <laughs> found out that there's a sword that you can swing around with your ship. I think I think I used it at some point in this. I, you unlock it pretty late. But the, the point is that it deals more damage the faster you swing it. And there's uh -huh. another weapon that lets you teleport around the screen. So uh -huh. you're teleporting, the, swing is the, the sword is technically swinging infinitely oh. fast. <laughs> so you can pretty yeah, much okay. just take out a full wave, get enough meter, teleport the other way, take out the whole next wave, and just keep doing that, like wiggling back and forth, forth across the screen until you're at the boss in about, you know, 20 seconds. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was so, pretty, like, it was pretty broken. Like, we saw it, we, we didn't even know you could yeah. do this. We just saw it on the leaderboard. We're like, why did this guy get first, just like... One day. <laughs> yeah, just one day, this guy was, like, topping all the leaderboards. I'm like, what? And then we looked, and we're like, what? his weapons are like, what is he doing? And then we tried him, and I was like, I don't get it. And I was thinking, I was like, wait, if you do this? And it's like, oh, man. And I go, like, oh, great. <laughs> so <laughs> it, was kind of a, it was kind of a bug exploit, but it was, uh, that's all fun. That's all fine. Like, hey, if you find a bug, sure. We'll fix it, cool. and you know you won't be able to do it again. But hey, you can have your your moment in the spotlight. Oh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> is, hey guys, just I wanted to. Do you guys have a link for a demo of the game that uh, yeah, our viewers so, can download? Yeah. So right now we're working to get it on Steam, and because of some other issues that are kind of un uninteresting, we're, uh -huh. our launch date right now is scheduled for August 11th, so Monday August of next 11th. week. And that's when August. you'll be able to get it on Steam. We'll, yeah, and then you'll get all the updates and stuff like that. So um. We're, we're working on final revisions to, you know, make sure it's stable and all that stuff. But um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, I don't know if you can post a link somewhere. You can uh, sure. follow us on Twitter, we'll, you'll get the announcement. We also post a lot of updates and what we're doing. And um, like when we're working with Hongeki, we post some things like, oh, we tried this idea, and oh, wow, that one did not work. Oh, is this the sword yeah. here? This is the sword and the Megavolt uh, Dino. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. Oh my god. Whoa. I'm, I'm loving those graphics. That's intense. Yeah, so big over the top action. Oh. Stage complete. Oh my Just, god. Just like zips away with the sword flinging around. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of a bug why I did that, but it's like, eh. It's kind yeah. of swag, so whatever. Yeah. You know, that's great. I mean, to take risks like that with 51 unique weapons. Oh yeah, it is. That's definitely uh, probably the highlight, I think, of this yeah. game. Yeah, and, and I'm really excited to hear about how you decided to balance it and how you decided to score it. I think that that really does make a lot of the weapon combinations valid, depending on how talented you are with a certain combo or what strategy you choose. So I think that that's a really, really good move. I'm actually quite excited about that. It gives you a lot of like playstyle options, too, because if you want to sit in the back, there's weapons that shoot projectiles and stuff. Those are really long range, right? But they don't tend to do as much damage. Whereas like your lasers, they pierce, right? They go through everything. But the range on those is usually really short. 
So it's mm -hmm. like if you're the kind of guy that wants to run up really close and like just laser everything down, there's a weapon that lets you do that, but it's really risky and you might die. But we oh. also have defensive weapons. So if you want to like throw on a shield and then do that, you can do that and it's safer. But now you're giving up one of your weapon slots for a defensive weapon that's not going to kill anything. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of, you know, risk reward and just how you pick your weapon. So the strategy begins before you even start playing the game. Oh, there's a little option. To... I'd like to interject also... is um, there's not a button for auto fire. You automatically have, you have true auto fire, which is yeah, just so, automatic. So the thing is, it's like, uh, I was thinking about this. I'm like, why would you ever not want to shoot? There's never a downside to shooting. And it's like <laughs> holding a button and I'm like, eh. And you like, so you it's haven't like, seen the rising episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, never mind. Right in games where it chaining, is bad to shoot, but, but, but anyway, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> but uh, I mean, with the game, and then also how we designed the game was we made sure it was always beneficial to shoot. So that was part of yeah. the design and making sure enemies. So uh, except for one of the challenges, which is like a mini game, there's no like revenge thing. So when you destroy an enemy, it creates a bullet. It doesn't. There's nothing that does that. Mm. What I like about about that, like always shooting, is like. Yeah, you can get rid of enemies, but it's just like, oh, I want to use my special weapon. Exactly. You know? It lets you focus on, you know, pushing the buttons that are important, which are the weapon yeah. buttons. And, and, uh, but you still have that kind of chaining where it's like, oh, I don't want to fire at a blank space. Exactly. So you it's know? like, do you hold or fire? And it's that decision, like, in real time. So when you're playing, there's definitely a lot of decisions that go on, you know, every moment to moment. There's always that Twitch gameplay, too. But you also have this bigger strategy and just what weapons you're going in, you know. What's um? What's your strategy? Yeah. Okay. That's well, a guys, good choice, um, I think. Do you think it's a good time to go for like these twenty questions? Yeah, and, we, should, uh, we should get started on that. For, for, sure. For you and Greg. So yeah, I think we got a good idea of this game, though. Uh, I think definitely people who are watching or going to be watching this will definitely be interested because. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, yes. the video that you gave us is really showing it off nicely, and it it is. And the I have whole to say weapon that system is. Really I, cool I looked stuff. up some some screenshots and some information about this before you know before coming on for today, but sure. I hadn't seen any video of the game, and seeing it now, it's like actually this looks pretty cool. It's much uh, better motion. I mean. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, needs a 60 FPS. It needs the actual action, not just this is yeah. kind of a little bit. Um. Okay. So we'll get in some 20 questions. This is uh, from our. Uh, big big friend uh, Black Oak over at Chmuplations, and he did some uh, 20 questions. He translated 20 question interviews for Japanese video game designers back in 1985. So we're going to try to use the same questions here. Uh, yeah, we're going to take. We're gonna, we're, you guys are going to pretend as if you were in 1985 yeah. answering these questions. <laughs> answering these <laughs> they're almost 30 dream. years ago. So <laughs> yeah, some of these questions are pretty weird. So uh, yeah, I'll, we'll make it up. I'll make it. Up. This will be fun. How or why did you become a video game designer? Uh, a little Greg go first. Since I all right, all right. So, uh, first off, I uh, probably started with this uh, a, a class I took in a uh, like really late middle school computer science. It was like it was, it was kind of sort of a hey, let's drop you in Flash for the heck of it. Okay. And so we kind of just sort of were, were told, kind of make something. It doesn't really matter what, it doesn't matter if it works, it doesn't matter if it does anything, see what you could do. I made this awful zombie shooter and I hated it. <laughs> but, it but it was still cool because it kind of worked, and it was really cool. <laughs> so I kind of realized like it's really cool making something that you can show to someone and sort of say like, hey, don't just look at it, it's not just something you can see, it's something you can actually just interact with and you know, keep trying out and keep getting better at. So you love that concept from that point. Yeah. That's pretty cool. How about you, Jaren? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I started back in, like, when I was in sixth grade, elementary school. It was, like, um, I found Game Maker, actually, when, way back then. It was, it was totally different. It was way worse. But I found Game Maker. I started messing around with that. I was like, wow, it's really cool just to have, you know, a thing move on the screen and, it, like, shoots a thing and it, like, makes an explosion. And mm. then, you know, I always liked um, arcade-style games. I really liked you know, like shooters and stuff and just, you know, simpler games that are kind of gamey, but you know, it's a skill thing and it's like, oh, I beat this game. It's a thing. It's cool. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then I started, um, really seeing what people were doing. It's like, wow, this is really cool. And it's like, it's just a creative process and it was really exciting just to wow. create something. So what are you most scared of? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg, what are you most scared of? Oh, man, so I get the questions? You get the questions. Probably, uh, 
Uh, this is getting like pretty, pretty intense thing, but like the the idea of missing opportunities that I can't get again. Oh. Kind of just sort of like I I I I don't know. I just have this like aversion to making a choice that I know will close off another option somewhere else. Oh, that is very scary. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Because it's kind of like, you know, you do it, and then it's just like, I can't go back. This is this is the, the decision. Right. Okay, going down that one path. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Darren? What are yeah, you Yeah, I mean, for scared? me, it's mostly... Um... <laughs> I, I did not expect you to answer that seriously, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I... No, that, that, was, that was a good answer. Actually. That was a very... No, now I'm scared of it, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's one of those kind of adult fear things where like everyone kind of has it and, and yeah, but no one really like says it and but yeah, no one really talks ball. about it. That's yeah. a very okay. good answer. Yeah. We're 1985 here. Things are a bit more serious. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> 1985. We are real good game designers. I'm kind of older than the rest of you guys, so a little bit of advice is that <laughs> there are there are a lot of opportunities. And I'll just leave it as that. There are a lot of opportunities. Oh no, I I know it's kind of irrational. It's just kind of you know. No, no, no. I'm not saying, but I'm just. You know, just saying that. Maybe the solution. Yeah. For a short term. Yeah, but uh, for me, I guess what I'm most scared of, if we're staying kind of here, is um, like making something and having someone else like not like it. Something I think is really cool, and then someone tries it and is like, I don't get it. It's like making a game and stuff is one of the worst feelings I hate and that I really, I just like absolutely hate is when I make a game and I was like, oh yeah, this will be really good. And then someone plays it and they just like put it down and walk away and they're like, I don't get it. And it's like, oh, oh, I hate that. Or like the game crashes or it's like, they have a negative experience for something that I wanted, you know, I wanted to make for other people. And like, it's just, they don't like it. And, and like, you put a lot of work into it because there's a different thing between like programming a game and then just picking up a game and playing it, right? That yeah, I mean, it's just the amount of work and like, but even then, it's like it doesn't matter how much time I put into it. If someone doesn't like it, it's just like, uh. It's wow. gonna be that's gonna be a helpful perspective when it comes to shmups mm -hmm. to getting people to play these. But I think oh, you definitely. made the good choice with like the emphasizing the weapon system and stuff like that because people like weapon like you know all sorts of weapons. <laughs> you like weapons. Like that's that's pretty general, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, guys, let's move on. What is the ultimate fast food? Wait, is this from 1985? Yes. <laughs> you is, you can, you can, Jared, I'm taking the last one. You take this one. You can answer this. It's 2014, ultimate, obviously. Ultimate fast food? I don't know, yeah. man. I like running down to McDonald's and you, you run with a couple of your buddies and you get like 100 chicken nuggets with fries and a drink. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. They brought back you can't beat that. They brought back honey mustard. I mean, hot mustard. They canceled it for a while. And now they brought I, I, hot mustard back. I don't know. I, I, I don't like any of their other dressings. It's, it's all about uh, barbecue. Oh, barbecue. Oh, How about barbecue the barbecue thing. sauce? It's, uh, the other ones are just kind of weird. Like the hot and sour, it tastes like a kind of weird. Yeah, chemical -y taste, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, McDonald's is full of chemicals. You don't go there to eat healthy. You go there because you have 100 chicken nuggets, help your buddies and fries. Like, hey. It's like you've slain the, a chicken nugget beast and you feed with your friends. E exactly, you. exactly, exactly. You conquered. You're conquering <laughs> McDonald's. One chicken now, nugget. everyone gets nuggets. <laughs> How about you, Greg? Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of a, a milkshake person, uh, so uh, I kind of I have to say I'm, I was pretty impressed. I've only been there once, but the Sonic milkshakes, it's, it's oh, pretty yeah, good value are... for the money. Like you get like the large, uh, like the night, it's like two dollars. It's like giant. <laughs> I, I was impressed. Oh damn. Two dollars for a giant milkshake? Oh, I'm in there. Wow. I don't even know how much it is. <laughs> two dollars to make you swallow. Yeah, Just for the record, uh, we'd like to point out that SGG Weekly is not directly affiliated with any fast food companies. We are not being paid the same. <laughs> what if we were, though? I mean, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> so we get paid to get sponsored and say, I only eat flop. This is the culmination of our careers here. Yeah, if right. any fast food company out there will, will sponsor us, we are open for ideas. We could have, uh, like... <laughs> The happy, uh, happy meal toys for Hangeki, all the different yeah, weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You get, you and get you can little, attach like... them to yeah, the yeah, to your yeah. ship. You can have different nuggets, like fifty-one nuggets. So. But, oh, it'd uh, be a nugget wave. It'd be a nugget wave. Yeah, a wave of hundred nuggets. <laughs> you get the McDonald's theme Hangeki. There you go. So, getting on to the next question, guys. Do you have a reoccurring dream? Am I, am I gonna take this one? I guess I'll take yeah, this you're one. Yeah, you're taking this one. I took the first two. I mean, it would really be to, you know, make something that 
gets really popular. I mean, there's I think there's a question later up. I've seen the question list, but uh, I think I'll touch on it later. But there's a couple games that I've looked at, and it's like I want to do that. It's like an international thing, and it's like it's really popular. People just like it, but it's not super, you know, commercialized. It's not super like oh, you know, DRM, EA, like hey, you can't actually play your game, mm. but it's just something people really like. That's so, all I really want. Just this is a, a, this lot is of a dream that ha that haunts your sleep. Yeah, it's just I want to. <laughs> yeah, I, cool. I really just want to make something a lot of people like. Mm. And it might seem kind of like, oh, you don't make it for other people, you make it for yourself. But I don't know, man. When you make a game and other people seem to like it, like it feels really good. Because it's new, right? Like there's some things where you see like a very good game and a lot of people like it, and you like it, and you're like, this is a new game. It's not retreading things. It's new, and yeah, that's it's why just, all these like I want to. It's like I want to do that. It's like I want to. I want to make something that's never existed before and just be like, people like it. They're like, wow, this is really cool. I've never played anything like it. And it's like, oh, wow. Like, that would be really cool. Awesome. Greg? Or? I don't know. It's kind of <laughs> kind of covered there. I mean, okay, it's could, just the idea of making something that is kind of just people really like is, as a whole is just, you know. Awesome. Okay. So, I guess that covers, um, what is, okay, so what is your, I know this is kind of an unfair question, but try your best <laughs> to answer it. Okay. What is your favorite game? My favorite game? Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. But you gotta answer it. I gotta, <laughs> gotta answer one. Or, okay, I gotta give you, okay. or, or name three games that you find, that you're playing right now that you like, or something like that. Nah, we got. We have to pick one. We don't get to dodge the question. I know. Okay. You, yeah. okay. Every, everyone has one in their mind yeah. that they may or may not want to say. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll go with that. Um, I don't know if any of you played uh, Osu. It's pretty popular. I have. I know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that would probably be one of my favorites. I played a lot. You know? Cool. It's. I mean, one thing that makes it really great is once again, like the the large community around it, and it's all user generated content. So it's always got like new songs and new maps and stuff like that. So. And it also ties in with um, other stuff like anime is going on and stuff. So, you know, there's a cool new song from an anime. It's like it'll probably show up in Osu. And hey, you know, it kind of bridges my hobbies a little bit. Mm, that's uh, true. Ironically, that was cool. actually one of the things that I didn't like about Osu. Really? <laughs> well, some with of it's bad. But... With, the, with the rhythm game, I find that, like, it, it, people tend to sync things a little bit differently. And so when you have user-generated stuff, it's like from one song to the next, the sync can feel totally off. No, yeah, place. yeah. So that's the so other thing is from, that I play. Uh, I, I've gotten into Beatmania 2DX recently, and so like that's like ev it's super, super, super tight on everything, and so I'm, yeah. I'm used to that. And then going to Osu, it's like, whoa, this feels really weird. Yeah, yeah, it's different. I mean, you get as you play more, you get to know the mappers, so the people who actually make it. And then there's a couple, and then so you look at mappers and you th you see like style so every different person who makes maps has a, their own style and stuff Ooh. so you get a sense of that and i think that's one of the things that makes it interesting is that you know it's it's very different so one song the same song can be done by two different people and you know have two different feels so yeah i mean maybe i should give it another try I, a couple of my friends have been raving about it recently so it's just different it's just something you have to get used to but uh, i think in the long run it's it makes it more interesting okay i'll see ya Bye. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was Next the wife. Okay. Yeah. Our, uh, oh, do I, I, I need to answer now? Okay. Um, right. hmm. it's, it's tough. I, I kind of like split. I think I'm going to make the jump and, and go for the newer ones since I feel like that's where I'm going to go in the future. Let's go for the, go for the serious Sam. I, it's just the gameplay. Need that fast paced stuff. Serious Sam. Okay. Serious Sam. It's kind of like a first-person shooter, but kind of Doom, but more enemies. Um, yeah, I've, I've always been. I've always meant to play that series. Never got to it though. Oh, dude, it, it's, it's very serious. Very serious. <laughs> <laughs> Is that oh, Santa? Actually, How do you play it? I played it. What? All of them. Yeah, and actually, on all, the stream the video right now. At least. Uh, yeah. So on the stream right now, there's right now it's on the level nine, so the underground, and the boss of this level is definitely probably one of the, the coolest bosses in the game. I won't spoil anything, but it's a uh, it's pretty it's pretty cool. So I definitely look out for that boss. Okay. On the other hand, I'll point out that this is probably my worst 
like level play in the video because I almost got the last level without dying and then I died at the like the last chunk of the boss's health and it uh, hurt. <laughs> so now I now I just I, I I messed this level up pretty bad. You know oh, yeah, the bullet you speed feels like Toho bullet speed, like that kind of Oh yeah. It's slow. Uh, I can see that influence too in these bullets, so pretty cool. Next um, question. Next question. Alright, so we're going to go with um since you guys kind of, kind of come from a, at least Jaren, you come from an anime background. Um, who is your favorite manga artist? Um, I don't really know him by name, but okay. uh, one of the one of the mangas recently it was uh, Akame Ga Kiru. So the art style on that I thought it was really nice because it, it was a nice blend of you know a nice hard edge and defined lines, but it also had a lot of like just splattering of ink and a lot of really. Um, oh. Expressive strokes. I don't know if that's a good word, but it was very like okay. visceral. It was really edgy, and it was. Um, Can you say that yeah, a little bit slower? It's called Ama. Akame ga kiru. It isn't. It's out as an anime right now too, but it was a. Uh, it was a manga. The oh, anime is okay. pretty good compared to the manga too. So you know, if you like the manga, watch the anime. It's actually pretty good. Okay, Akame ga kill. Okay, gotcha. Red eye killer or Akame slashes. Okay. How about you, Greg? Are you into m manga? I'm or? not much of a manga person. Mm, okay. I haven't really looked at too much. <laughs> any yeah, comic books? How about, co how about regular, any kind of comic books or anything? Uh, not so much. Okay. Next, uh, so the next question we have is for you. Uh, what qualities are necessary to be a game designer? Um, uh, why don't we let Greg go first for this one? All right, well, I'd say definitely one big thing is that you have to be okay with changing stuff that you put time into. Oh, <laughs> <There's> <laughs> actually, stuff happened where we make oh, it yeah. like, okay, this seems kind of cool. And then we actually try it out. Like, you know, we, we kind of like step back for a day. We try it the next day. And it's like, wow, this actually kind of sucks. Oh. And I think a big part of it is being able to say like, okay, this, this just isn't working. We need to, we need to rethink it all. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, the struggles of game designers. That's amazing. <laughs> oh no, there there is a pretty big uh, because around AX when we were doing that, it's a uh, there was a little bit of a drama, I guess. I don't know. We were working with some other people. That was serious. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we were working with some other people, and uh, they don't work with us anymore. Then oh. so there was a lot of stuff. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff that went on. It's uh, the details are really long, and they're interesting, but it's too long. So uh, okay, well we don't. Yeah, maybe maybe, we maybe we'll. Just... Uh, but that's Somewhere. like you're you're part of a doujin circle, right? We I kind of mentioned this a little bit, like a doujin. I'm so funny. Like I wonder if we passed each other in the exhibit hall, or I passed her boo. So it's <laughs> I'm kind of, sure we did at some point. Yeah, I didn't. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah. yeah. Wow, that's crazy. It. So you're dealing with other people on your team, and sometimes things don't work out, and it's like it's yeah. not a yeah. business, but you still have that same stressors, right? Yeah. I mean, it's everybody wants the same thing. It's just everyone has different ideas of how to do it. Everyone wants a great game. I don't think anyone works on a project and says, I don't want this game to be the best it can be. Nobody does that. Yes. It's just everyone has different ideas of how to do it. So, and then sometimes, I don't know, people get, you know, there's other things that get in the way. Like what Greg was saying, it's like, oh, he spent like, he spent so much time on it and he doesn't want to let it go because he spent like so much time on it. And it's like, we have to let it go. It's not working. Uh, 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 kind of related is kind of nice thing about you know these indie affairs and having small teams as it does harken back to the old days of uh, making shmups when there was really small teams oh yeah i mean know? like to make hongeki it was like almost over 90 percent of the game was me and greg wow <laughs> and no, then like fine. for the art and stuff we got some help with the art from uh, a guy named terence but the other people on the team really didn't actually do much they kind uh -huh. of went along for the ride which was part of the problem the trash talking Right, so oh. this is where we, when we came around AX real quickly, the basic summary is they started, you know, I guess stepping out of line or something. It's like they were talking like they spent all this time on the game when they mm. really actually didn't contribute much. And they're trying to like dictate what we're doing. And it's like, Greg and I had this idea of what we wanted to do. And then they're oh. like, no, but I already spent so much time doing this. And we're like, well, it's not going to fit. We won't be able to make it work. And they're mm. like, no, we have to. And then it's. It was, it was yeah, it was really, it was a really mess, and I hated mm. it. But now it's um, they don't work with us anymore, and it's pretty much just going to be me and Greg going forward, and you know we'll still make great stuff. I mean, like wow. I said, over ninety percent of this game was just us two. It's that type of stuff you'd never hear about, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's I mean, we're not expecting it. 
No, it's like working, you know, working on a team, working with people. Yeah. It isn't all sunshine and daisies, you know. People, sure. people are people, and people want things, and sometimes what you want is not what someone else wants. Sure. I really yeah. love this boss pattern, by the way, with the chains. Yeah, awesome. Oh, the chain, he like yanks the chain and like zones you That's with that. That's really like, neat yeah. looking. <laughs> Spoilers. Laser web and... So I, oh, I know we don't show the a term called, right. called zoning. Like that's something like a, a in a boss instance, right? In a multi role playing game that would zone you, right? Did that have any effect on you? I'm just trying to tease out maybe if you play like World of Warcraft and that maybe yeah, affected uh, some of the games. Never played World of Warcraft, but um, mm -hmm. I played I played an MMORPG when I was in like the high school. Okay. Although I wasted way too much time on it because I was like, if I'm gonna play an MMO, I gotta like optimize everything. I gotta like do the math, and it was terrible. I was like okay. optimizing the dumbest things, and I'm just like, this is stupid. And it just yeah. it waste. It was fun, but it was just wasting way too much time. Yeah. So I just had to like say, I want to keep playing, but I can't because it's just. Oh wow. Yes. I just Speaking... I just noticed that you have different logos for for companies that are making some of the weapons. That's yeah, a, that's so... such a nice little touch there. Oh man. And like the weapon, yeah, so that was the thing. Then they're also thematic. So some of the weapons that are, you know, projectile based, explosive shot, like bullets or physical weapons, those are branded under like Randivar Industries. And like laser based <laughs> weapons are, are made by Pulsar, and all the fire weapons are like Infernix and all stuff that like this crystal energy. It's like, oh, that's Crystallics. And... That's that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I love little touches like that. Um, like like the kind of when the, when the design environment of the game kind of becomes part of the game experience itself yeah, like uh, exactly. like the wipeout games for example fantastic yeah no exactly yeah that's uh i played that and i really like wipeout for that too is yeah. that the companies really don't have anything to do with anything but having them there it really having them there it's just that extra better <laughs> feeling yeah, it's just, just that extra little level of realism like oh this is the company that's making yeah. that it just actually it got made by someone it didn't just like pop out of you know the thin air and... yeah that's that's great um real quick was there a uh, story like that's beyond the just aliens <laughs> invade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay, so you know, you know so, so the whole thing. About, the whole you thing. know what I was talking about? Um, uh, uh, the drama around AX. Okay. <laughs> that was yeah. on story. The oh, guy okay. was like, on story, story, and then situation. he's like, I'll get you voice acting and all that. He spent all the time getting voice acting. He didn't show us anything. He pretty much said, I'll do it. I want to do it. And then I was like, if you can do it, I can. Th I think we can make it work. And then Greg and I worked to, you know, reprogram the game to make it. You know, with story, really? of, we had these. We had this really nice engine going, where the the character portraits would like smoothly go in and out. We had like this cutscene system, yeah. and we had to scrap it because the guy who was taking care of the writing and voice acting, first of all, he didn't finish it on time. He didn't get all of it. Second of all, the voice Man. acting he got us was actually really bad. Oh. And it was <laughs> like I I know you spent so much time getting all this, but I'm cringing when I'm listening to this voice acting. It can't it, go in. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? So you gotta yeah. call it out. <laughs> oh, exactly. So I'm just like, we can't. And that's when he got really mad and, oh man. Then the rest is, for the next like month we were fighting him and I was like, oh my god. Oh, okay. that's, that's so crazy because it's one thing, okay. it's so hard to program a game in the first place. But oh yeah. Now, now you have to deal with people with what they do and it's like, ah. Oh. Wow. So that's one of the, if, um, if I can throw out a piece of advice, only work with people who you're really close friends with and you know how they work. If you're going to do a project for longer than like a couple months and you want to do it seriously, mm -hmm. make sure you know the people you're working with really well. Like I know Greg, we share similar values, so that's not going to happen. It's a non-issue. Uh -huh. But if you just like want to work with someone randomly and say, hey, let's make this really great game. I just want to make it. Who do I need? Hey, you, you do art. Let's work together. Don't do that. Yeah. It's only going to cause you problems later. It's just, it's only going to cause problems. It's is, it just because, find... is it because you didn't socially hang out with this person and couldn't see I mean, he was work? friends with another, because there was another one of my friends who, um, his name was Joda, and he uh -huh. was with us for... That's how we should avoid dates. For, um, but uh, he was, yeah. yeah, but he was with us um, <laughs> oh. Sorry. for uh, that, for a lot, good portion of the team, actually. Mm -hmm. And then, but the thing is, uh, stuff went on and... He was, yeah. he was friends with the guy we brought on and all that. And I mean, the whole thing about hiding names is like, hey, he did it. Everyone should know. Like, yeah. If you okay. do something, <laughs> you shouldn't be able to hide behind it. Like, why are we keeping the secret? Everyone else is just going to suffer now. Oh, it's like, I, 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 I want to share it. Don't make the same mistake I did. So like, would you would you have been able, like, if you saw work at, like, every step of the way and then could yeah, do a, it would a group? To iterate. I mean, that's the other thing about, um, mm -hmm. I think the question still was, you know, what it takes to be a game designer. It really mm -hmm. is just iterate. Like, you're not going to get it right the first time. 
expecting saying, oh, I'm going to go, you know, make a shooter and okay, I make a ship, make a shoot, make a move, have enemies that blow up. It's like, not yeah, it's not nice, but when you go to make it, it's like, you have to keep tuning it, you have to keep changing it. I and see. just, like Greg was saying, a willingness to change things, a willingness to iterate, really just make it happen. And if you don't wow. have it, you're just going to... The gonna end things. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, like, just four days ago, I actually completely rewrote how the, you know, the joystick maps to uh, acceleration. Like, it used to be kind of just, you push it, you move. Now it's, you push a little bit, you can push a lot. It's kind of just, you have to realize, like, wait, it could be better in this way. We gotta do this. And it's a lot oh, of work oh, to oh, put you, that you, you use the word acceleration. This is, this is a problem. Yeah, I was gonna try to talk, <laughs> talk a bit about that. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. So, uh, yeah, with uh, the acceleration. So, I know in a lot of shooter games, you know, you want, you know, binary movement. Basically, you're moving or you're not. And yeah. you have a very, you know, a very stiff feel. But I mean, with Hongeki, a lot of what made the game fun is, you know, moving around with your weapon, sweeping across the screen, like feeling like a jet fighter, right? You're like spinning, doing all those crazy maneuvers, right? But oh, when you have a game, spin. right, but when you have something like a bullet hell or something that requires that precision, usually what happens is you, you use like really tight controls that are like, oh, you push that button, you move that direction. But with Hongeki, what we wanted was the ability to move in a circle, like a smooth circle. Notice that but we didn't want to stop. Right, we didn't want to lose precision either way, either or in the process though. So actually, the movement of Hongeki is incredibly complicated, and it's uh, it has a lot of things to try to make it precise yet loose at the same time. So when you mm -hmm. usually play it, it's um a lot of things players do when they first play is they end up smashing into the wave, but then after a while you see them get used to it and it works because its controls are very different from other shooter games. Like when you play this, you'll be like, oh wow, it's really it's really loose. But it's not really that it's loose, it's just the rules of the acceleration are much more nuanced. It's like, if you if you want to change direction, you can do it practically instantly. But if you want to like make a turn, when you roll, when you roll the keys like that around, it, uh, it'll it try to smooth out that curve, but you can override that by pulling back on the keyboard and stuff. So it's just, Whoa. it's a little bit more technical in how you can maneuver your ship. Yeah, it well, doesn't really right, feel that um, off-putting, I'll say that. So. Okay, well, that's that's very reassuring, actually. You know, I, yeah, I heard that word, like and I'm inertia. like, uh oh, uh oh, this is this is bad. Because yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I, you know, no, it, it, it sounds like, like you guys have put a lot of thought into it, yeah. and, and if Aquas is saying it's all right, then I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely <laughs> give that a shot. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is also the bullet patterns are not nearly as dense. Okay. That, yeah, there's a lot of bullets, but you usually have a lot more space. Like the screen is wide. Like in a lot of screen, in a lot of uh, shooter games, it's vertical, right? Your horizontal movement is actually you don't really have much space to move. But in this, it's a widescreen game, right? So you actually have a lot of space to move around. So it ends up taking the strategy away from, you know, minute, you know, little movements to streaming strategies where you bring bullets to one side of the screen and then run over to the other. So it's just, it, it changes up, you know, kind of your strategies. So having, you know, instantaneous movement wasn't really necessary for the gameplay. Oh, and then actually, uh, we had really or stiffer movement before and it just really felt crappy. Because oh. like when I, use your weapons. I want to fire a weapon, sweep across the screen, blow everything up. And it's like, it's got to feel smooth, right? Much. Or you use the gallon lid or something, and it's got to feel smooth, right? It's got to feel like it looks. Mm. Like, if I'm, if I'm blowing right. a lot of things up, it's got to be smooth. Uh, that's a quick question. Are the weapons affected at all by your movement? Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, it's, it's like if you were you know, uh, with a certain momentum, would something fire differently? That's pretty much the entirety of the sword. <laughs> okay, yeah, the sword. Okay. So some weapons are. It, it's specific them. weapons, not okay. as a general rule. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, oh, all, that's what I was wondering. So, I mean, the game is still very like I play a lot of shooter games. I want to make sure this game was precise too, right? Like you could come with a strategy, make plays, and if you're a better player, you will go faster. So that was one of the big design goals, and I mean, I, I think we got pretty close. And we're, we're always tuning, so by player feedback, if you guys are saying, like, hey, this doesn't feel right or whatever, like, well, anything, and we'll definitely take a look. Because we want to make this game great. It's not about, you know, selling you something. It's about making something that's great. Right. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue on there, finish up with this interview if we can. Okay. Uh, frenetic, if you want to pick a few more. All right. Um, I think the next question, and probably the last question, is... Um, okay. What is That's the fun. thing you want most in the world now? Wow. Right now, I want Hungeki to sell well and do well and have people like it. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. now, that's that's what I want. I just want the game to get out there, 
have people start talking about it. like if people posted like their own YouTube videos of Pongeki and stuff, that'd be awesome. I go watch every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, it's a little saddening because like I, I'm, I'm looking at the YouTube videos. The last one I see is from like 2013 by I think like Jimmy Dolly or something like that. And wow, yeah, does the game not look as good then? Is there wow. a <laughs> is there a replay mode in Hongeki? No, uh, we were uh, talking about that for for a long time actually. Mm -hmm. It just ended up being that like it's the same thing as why we don't have why we have local co-op but not online co-op. It's just there's like with all the different weapons and all the different types of things, it gets really uh -huh. hard to manage and balance or to not so much balance but test. With every single combination of every single thing and every single yeah. level. I've heard replays can be a hard thing to do. Especially if you're not planning for them in advance. I see. So guys, if you have your capture cards, put it on, you know, put Tangeki on and capture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah get that shit in there. Yeah. Oh, I like the Space Invader <laughs> pattern there, that was great. Yeah, oh man. This game's cool. Um... All right, so yeah, so we'll take any questions in the chat if we can, if anyone has those. Um, other than that, yeah. Uh, what else we want to talk about? I was going to say earlier, um, with regard to kind of iteration and, and, and everything, I I noticed when I when I was working on my game, I mean, it's it's still very much, you know, incredibly limited, incredibly pro, like prototype stage right now. But I noticed that just the subtlest changes make a huge difference in in terms of how mm -hmm. things feel, like. Uh, like when I was first programming the movement, um, it's like, okay, this doesn't feel right at all. And I had to go like look up and remember like, oh, you're supposed to do square root two movement speed because that feels oh, yeah. more natural. And mm -hmm. so there was like a whole like, you know, 20, 30 minutes where I was play testing and like, it, you know, this feel, it feels tight, it feels responsive, but it doesn't feel right. Like the, the, yep. the diagonals. Mm -hmm. so. The trickiest thing is when you start, if you don't like move on that right when you first notice it, you eventually start feeling comfortable with it, like with, with the control yeah. sticks. Like, I've had mm -hmm. for, for about a year now. Like, I, I thought it was okay, but then someone else pointed out, like, hey, it could be better. So I started trying playing some other games that are, you know, a similar style with, that have acceleration and a joystick. And I realized, like, wow, that those ones control so much better. I just never noticed because I've been playing this for so long. Yep. And actually, um, on the note of uh, diagonal movement, I think, because one of the things if you, in a lot of shooter games, when you imagine, you know, movement in a shooter game, a lot of it is, oh, you press right and you move, like, a speed of five right, like, at all times while holding. You push up, you move five units, like, up, right? Mm -hmm. The the trick is if you hold both, you're now moving five, you're moving like that on a diagonal. So it's, yeah, it's, it's different from the, the, like, linear directions, right? It's that diagonal, it feels different. Yeah, because that, now those are on the side, talking. right? Oh. Yeah. So you actually have to compensate for that if you're making that control. If you want it to feel, you know, circular. Yeah. Which is uh, a lot like of problems a, we have with Hongeki, actually. Um, let me think a, a good example would be like, comparing like like rising games, diagonals, how the diagonal feels kind of fast. And then if you play like a rising game and then a cave game, you'll notice that the cave diagonal feels different than the rising diagonal does. And that yeah. has to do with that this exact phenomenon. Exactly. It's just, yeah. <laughs> how they how they handle that and then the games just have that different feel and it's like you can't really tell what it is exactly but it yeah. just feels different it's just something which different. Is what, which is what makes it hard because you can't just tell the computer hey make this feel different no we gotta give it <laughs> math and stuff you gotta know exactly you know what makes it different yeah so um, definitely player yeah. movement was one of the hardest things to get right in this game because it, it's it's very complicated there's a lot of rules but you just you when the players play you just move a ship and you see it move but the behind the scenes stuff yeah, it got, gets pretty complicated. Um, sure. And I mean, at AX, when we gave our little, we gave a panel discussion, we actually talked about how the movement is set up. And, uh... Oh, wow. You guys were on a panel. Guys, you guys ran a panel? Oh, yeah. We had a, we had a panel. Yeah, it was Resurrecting the arcade experience? It was, uh, it was Friday. Oh, yeah. that, was, that was you. Oh, shit. Yeah. We should have gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually really wanted to go to that one, but we had all kinds of. Oh, yeah. That was us. That was us. So much of a snafu with Friday, you just don't even know. <laughs> Well, that was the whole day that everything came up with the story thing, too, so... Oh, yeah. No, there was all, all kinds of drama going on. But... Dang. Yeah, yeah, there was. Um, but you get through it, right? You know? Yep. Just keep yeah. on pressing through. Man, it's so... funny. We both, uh, we both had panels going on. It's funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next time, we'll have to team up or something. Yeah, yeah. No, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Actually, uh, uh, well, we, yeah, if we can get into... AX again, we'd love to feature your game, like in the console gaming room, because we had a presence oh, yeah. there and people kept on coming in and trying the game and... Mm -hmm. Definitely, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be really cool. 
And uh, I mean, we're also planning out our next project too, right? Because it's like, you know, we're not just going to make one game, right? Oh, we yeah. To, Please talk about that. Because we're kind of driving around. I mean, we're not going to talk about that yet. We're still working out the, the details. We still don't know stuff, how it's going to work. <laughs> but uh, we okay. have a premise, and it's going to, if you like Hongeki, you'll probably like it. It's not going to be a shooter game per se, but the same mm. basic um, principles apply. So it's going to be a very high skill cap where oh, you, cool. you can get really good at it. Mm. And, um, yeah, we got some concept art that I'm drawing up and stuff. So uh, maybe wow. in, a, in a couple weeks when we're ready to roll that out, uh, yeah, we'll definitely make an announcement. And if you follow us on Twitter, you'll get that announcement. So yeah. do you guys feel like you're a doujin circle? Like, what would you say that's different or the same about doujin circles in J Japan and doujin circle, like indie in America? Do you think they're one and the same? Or I mean, it's, um, it's similar, but I think the... The difference is one that the the culture of the doujin thing in in like Japan and stuff it's much it's much more um, more of a thing I guess if that's the way to put it mm -hmm. is that if you say you're part of a doujin circle they have like huge conventions dedicated to just that stuff and they're like some of the biggest in the world like Kamakets and stuff they have that twice a year and they yes. have like conventions for a bunch of other circles like there's the Toho conventions and stuff but in like the U S you don't really get a lot of that because the U S is very much more focused on you know corporate business things like that so you get more of that and indies end up trying to have to try to fit into that business model kind of but um I, mm. or at least that's what i think i don't really know i mean just yeah. kind of poking around that's just what i'm thinking but uh so one thing and we're I how we're trying to i think you're on the money on that one yeah. yeah i think that's a good way to look at it i mean, so, I mean the, the thing is um i would love to have the doja mentality and i definitely still want to keep that it's like we make games that we just want to make the game great if it's a great game, it will do all the other stuff will take care of itself. Mm. But at the same time, it's like we are working in this structure and if we don't have the, you know, that business mindset to try to do stuff, then it's like we're just going to get buried and no one's going to find it. Yeah, you want the so, audience basically. Right, I just it's I just want to get it out to you guys, but it's not it's not that's not my focus is not, you know, what can I sell you to make money and all that stuff and blah blah blah. I just want to give you guys great products. Of course I need to make a living too, right? Or we need to make a living, so you know, yes. of course, we have to we have to sell it, right? Because, I mean, we did spend all this time, and we do need to live. But yes. the end goal is the money is only a means to make more games later. It's not uh, you know, making a big wad of cash sitting on it, buying a house, buying a nice car, and all that. No, it's it's really about just. So our mentality, I like to think our mentality is similar to like the Dogen Circle. Uh, we're just doing something cool, but <laughs> because of you know the structure of where we are and what we have to do is uh, we have to balance that with you know more corporate stuff and business and legal documents and uh i don't want to deal with it <laughs> you're yeah i mean it definitely is a yeah. cool game and and i hope you guys out there um watching stg weekly uh we kind of made the show in order to market you know to get these indie games out there so one was like doing a retrospective on niche games that maybe didn't have a lot of attention in the past but now we want to do something like this and Big ups to Aquas and you guys for coming along to doing an indie month and highlighting these games that sometimes, you know, it's retro, but now you can play these type of gameplays that you do like, not because they're just old, you know, but because it's a gameplay that survived the test of time. So, I mean, yeah, this uh, meeting with you guys has exceeded my expectations, basically. <laughs> you know, um, that, because, that's yeah, good, right? Because it's really awesome, and it's like I mentioned earlier, you know, shmups, they do usually have the small teams, and with that, you really can get focused on kind of how these games play. And uh, the fact that we get to, you know, talk to a team like that, you know, this, this, this could basically be a team from back, like, in the arcade days. We could be talking to, but thanks to the glory of the internet, et cetera, et cetera, um, <laughs> we're able to uh, have an interview like this, and, you know, never would have, you know, never really would have thought I'd be talking with basically game developers about like you know games are coming out but here we are so it's awesome <laughs> well I, I think that kind of defines stg weekly in general i mean you know looking at it like a year ago i don't think frenetic or i ever thought that we would be putting on you know a panel of fun 300 people at ax but then we went and did that i don't i don't think anyone expected this to go where it did but yeah. i'm i'm really happy that we have and, but, and uh, saying this is a, this is great i mean talking to people you know having this this kind of direct contact with with the people who are producing the kind of games that we love so much I yeah mean, it's, that's and, and uh and you guys are setting a really good tone for the rest of the month as well 
yeah definitely. Um, when we when Very we meet with definitely. the other developers so that's gonna be great cool. and since you guys are going to ax maybe we can partner um next ax so yeah, yeah i mean i'm definitely interested in talking about that and uh hopefully by then we'll have something for the next game we're working on so we can uh we can definitely have some cool stuff we can have hungeki there have whatever we're working on next and do a panel that'd together cool. yeah, yeah that'd be awesome that'd be yeah. really cool so good times all right. So I feel like we're kind of winding down on the episode here. Um, guys yeah. in the chat, do you guys want to ask a question? Uh, any budding game designers there? or? I think they're uh, they're tapped out at the moment. Okay. Yeah. They're just too <laughs> amazed by the awesomeness. That it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're just, they're watching and they're just pressing space bar like over and over. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so guys, uh, we're going to put it on Twitter and we're going to give uh, the Hangeki teams contact info in there so Definitely. if you want to email them post it to twitter um and then once it comes out on steam then we can start doing some waves of like here's the demo that's out we've got you know a lot of followers on on, on twitch and twitter and whatnot so we'll make sure to get those out for you uh the hangeki team so oh, we, we do have one question coming in uh blackbird is asking uh, if you guys have a publisher uh which i'm, I'm thinking is probably a subtle nod oh. to what he's working on right now but yeah, so uh, we, we, we don't, actually. I, I would like a publisher because, I mean, at a certain point, it's um, they have way more resources than us. And what I want to do is I want to try to get this game to, like, Asian markets and stuff, localize it, because I think, you know, getting the game into more places, like, there's more countries than just the U.S., right? Yes. So the U.S. isn't the only country in the world. Sorry, guys. America. America. But, I mean, I, I definitely want to work with a publisher because they, they have a lot more resources to get it out. And, um... And I mean, if the worry is, you know, if you work with a publisher, you know, it, it changes the way the game is. But not really, because at least the way I am, it's um, I would definitely be very standpoint or very strict on making sure that the quality of the product is not compromised. It's like the game's got to be good. Like it's a game made by fans for fans. That's one of the greatest parts about it is that it was made by people who like these kinds of games. So, yeah, that's uh yeah, I think that's a great thing to take. So all you publishers watching us, TG Weekly? Yeah. yeah, we're text. looking for some. If you uh, shoot, shoot me an email, you can uh, find me at uh, on our website, pensavera.com. If you send it to that contact at Pensavera, that goes straight to me. It's just a forwarding address. So I read every email. It's not that many. It's not that popular. Oh, after this, though. <laughs> That'd be cool. Hey, you know, if I, if there's a thousand emails in that inbox, I'll read through a thousand emails. There's yeah. That, that's awesome. All right, guys, you heard him. Just send those emails. <laughs> now, if you spam me, that's a little different, and then I'm going to be a little mad. But... <laughs> send, send him a uh, shmup haiku or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, suppose we're done, eh? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Thank you, uh, Jaren and Greg, for coming on the show. Yeah, yeah thank you guys. It, so it's much. been great. This was awesome. Yeah, yeah, make sure you guys fun. follow us on Twitter. We uh, check us out on our website, and uh, we'll definitely announce when the game's coming out and stuff. So, and that that it's set to be what? What did you say? The 11th next Monday. So it's going to be August 11th. August okay. 11th on Geki on Steam, right? Yeah. Yep. That's okay. the date. Okay, Excellent. guys. Well, uh, stay tuned for the next episode this month. It's at Indie Dojindi Month here at SDG Weekly. Indeed. Yep. Thanks everyone for watching and we're out.